I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. We delivered on energy bills and on cutting national insurance. And we set out a vision for a low tax, high growth economy that would take advantage of the freedoms of Brexit. I recognise though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Sorry about that. Well, hello, my loves, and I hope you look well. You're looking fabulous, by the way. Have you been working out? And is that a new hairdo? Lovely. Anyway, it is. Let's do a time check. It is Thursday, it is uh, quarter to five, uh, and I thought it was about time that I took you to work with me. We haven't done it, oh, excuse me, uh, we haven't done it for a while, and I seem to recall that I went through a little phase of doing a driving to work on a Thursday thing. So I thought, why not carry it on, especially as the way that we're hurtling towards the, uh, the winter solstice there aren't going to be all that many more drives to work um, in daylight uh, when do the clocks do their thing is it um, it's the end of this month isn't it and it's already this month I keep thinking it's last month and not only is it this month I mean, we're kind of well into this month, aren't we? We've stampeded through it like galloping weasel droppings. Dear me. That's one of the scary things about getting old. Hopefully you guys won't know this. You're all young and vigorous and thrusty. But when you get old, time quickens up. You have a birthday every two weeks and Christmas comes round Oh, at least three times a month. Bloody terrifying. But at least I suppose the winters are shorter. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, a winter used to last for, well, at least 27 years. And now you have a bottle of wine, have a sleep or two, you're not sure how many, and bugger me, it's spring again. So there you are. Every uh, every cloud has a silver lining, doesn't it? Excuse me, just for a moment. Talk amongst yourselves while I do something. Ow! It's really difficult looking over my right shoulder at junctions and whatnot. Because, not last night, but the night before, I slept awkwardly. Uh, I had a bit of a lion as well, which exacerbated the problem. And I'd clearly fallen asleep um, before I'd ensured optimal pillow position because I woke up with a right stiffing and not in a good way um, with a really stiff neck and shoulder and it's still there so yeah actually looking over my shoulder is a bit hang on shoulder is a bit painful but there we are these little things are sent to try us as the actress said to the bishop well it's been a hell of a Thursday hasn't it um, I've been glued to BBC News all day since I was sitting minding my own business um, doing some editing actually on uh, on a video that will go live later tonight at 
Well, there's no point in telling you when it's going to go out later tonight because it won't be. I mean, it will be, but you won't be watching this tonight. I have to keep reminding myself that you're not watching this at the same time that I record it. We're not in the same time scale or place. You're not here with me in the car. The passenger seat is empty, which would make turning the heated seat on wasteful and extravagant, so I won't. But if you were here with me and you had a chilly body, you would be more than welcome to deploy the heated seat facility or indeed upon request I would do it for you and on your behalf. What was the point of that? Um, right, yeah. So, I was editing a video which by the time you watch this you may well have already watched because this will be going out tomorrow for me but that's kind of either now for you or some while ago, depending on when you were. It all gets jolly confusing, doesn't it? Um, anyway, crack on. Do your best. Try and make some sense. There's a good job. Get over there, you bewildering, great, popping, clattering buttock. Sorry about that. Um, where was I? Right, yeah, I was editing a video and the BBC News Flash thing popped up on my various eye devices to let me know that Liz Truss, our esteemed and somewhat beleaguered now ex-Prime Minister, has indeed resigned. Um, no great surprise there. Uh, she really did make some, I mean okay, she might not have sort of gone into the best circumstance. But there's no question that she made a complete bloody hauling of the whole thing. I mean, she really did, on every conceivable level. In a weird way, I admire her greatly. Because she has reached the top of the tree. The top of the greasy pole. And she has done so whilst, in my opinion, being a, a politician of exceptionally limited insight and ability. So, you know, to achieve the top job, to hit the, the, the top of that greasy pole, when you have a massive disadvantage like that, well, I mean, you know, fair play to her. It might have been a very specific set of circumstances that facilitated it, but she did it, and, you know, no doubt she's going to, ow, 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 my stiff neck again. She's going to be taking a bit of stick. Um, she's the long, shortest serving Prime Minister in history. Um, she's probably going to be feeling pretty damn rough. Uh, she's had to do the humbling and shame bit at the lectern outside the door of number 10 and she's going to be feeling pretty pants let's face it but that is a transitory thing in the longer term she did it and she will have all of the gravy train and trappings that all xpms get um she will get no doubt hugely lucrative quangos and seats on various boards and she'll be able to embark on highly paid speaking tours and she could write a book if she chose to or get a ghostwriter to do it for her. You don't see many poor ex-prime ministers and the honours will come along in due course. History will forget that she was a howling arse of a Prime Minister. So, you know, don't feel too bad for her. Um, she will be alright, don't you worry about that. Whether we will be alright is a whole different kettle of halibut. It's, it's not going to be the easiest of winters, is it, my love? Uh, and my loves, sorry, that wasn't addressed to just one of you. I just abbreviated a word. Um, 
and my heart goes out to each and every one of you and you know god love you all and let's hope that we all get through this bloody winter and crisis of this that and the bleeding other There you go, the, the Prime Minister has, well this one hasn't been toppled has she, I mean this one committed Hiri Kiri or whatever it's called, I mean yeah, she well and truly fell on her own sword, uh, dug her own grave, fell on her own sword, but I'm not going to feel too sorry for her and I suggest that you don't either. But that raises the question of who will be the next Prime Minister. Well, I'll tell you who I think it should be. I think it should be Boris Johnson, Mark II, the second series, season two. Boris Johnson, the sequel. Why do I think that? Well, on one hand, he's a good laugh and we could all do with some shits and giggles. And in terms of actually dealing with uh, grown-up stuff, um, well, on the whole, his premiership wasn't the biggest disaster. Um, there was the whole Brexit thing, which God knows it would be difficult to forgive him for. Um, I was a staunch Remainer. I consider that Brexit was... Uh, Brexit was uh, the kind of disaster that comes along once in a generation or once in several generations. But in other terms, he wasn't the worst. And as I say, he's a good laugh and we can all do with a bloody good laugh at the moment. But looking at it from the terms of the Tory government, they're 30 points behind in any poll that you care to look at. Which means that when it comes to the next election, the next general election, whenever that happens to be, they are going to lose by an absolute landslide. And that's losing by a landslide to, a, to an opposition who, in my very humble opinion, and do feel free to disagree, are not the greatest opposition in the history of the world. Um, do you know what Keir Starmer stands for? I haven't got a clue. Now bear with me while I concentrate on this staggered junction. There's a good technical term for you. Ow! I've got a... Oh! Ow! Okay, this is painful. There I... Yeah, let's go for it. Where was I? Ah, oh, right, the opposition and the Tories. Yeah, from a Tory point of view, they are at the moment well and truly stuffed. Now, say what you like about Boris Johnson, and many have, including myself, and no doubt will do so in future. He was popular with the electorate. He delivered the biggest majority in I can't remember how long it was, but it was certainly quite a long time. And bearing in mind that a week is a long time in politics, when you deliver the kind of majority that hasn't been seen for three or four decades, in political terms, that is several lifetimes. But there's a big argument going on at the moment about whether the Conservative Party or the Conservative leader has a democratic mandate to govern because the previous Prime Minister, Liz Truss, um, didn't have uh, an, elected, uh, an electoral mandate, she wasn't elected, and the next one won't be either. Now, they don't need to be elected in order to have a mandate. They have a parliamentary mandate on the basis that we live in a democratic um, parliament uh, and 
the Conservatives are the party in power and therefore any new Conservative leader coming in at the time that the party is in power has a de facto mandate. But whilst having one Prime Minister uh, within, a, within a governmental term not having been through a general election is very much not without precedent. Having two is unprecedented, uh, with the possible exception, I think, of one point in the war years. Um, so there's going to be grumblings and moanings about that. Um, and the last Prime Minister to have uh, an elected mandate was Bojo. So that would be an argument for bringing him back. And the other argument, and this isn't an argument that I would make, I'm trying to look at it from a Tory party point of view, um, is that there are going to be a lot of Tory MPs who are quite literally shitting themselves. Now, they might have stuck the knives into Bojo, but since then, everything has gone to hell in a handbasket. And they are looking at losing their seats, their nice, comfortable six-figure incomes, uh, and all of their perks. And they may well now just be remembering that Boris Johnson was popular with the masses. And it is the masses that vote in a general election. So, I would argue that Boris Johnson is actually the Tories' only hope of any form of redemption uh, in terms of being competitive, remotely competitive, in the next general election. And I don't mean that they would necessarily suddenly be in with a chance of reversing the polls and winning it, although that wouldn't be out of the question, but they wouldn't ow. They may well not lose it so badly, and some of those MPs who are shitting themselves might hang on to their seats. So that might be a more important consideration for those who had their knife into him now. They might be thinking, well, he is our only hope, because the Premiership to any other incoming Tory Prime Minister is going to be very much a poisoned chalice. Even if they hang on until the general election, that will be the end of it. So they're only ever going to be a caretaker PM. Now I suppose you could argue that, as in the case of Liz Truss, being a, uh, a caretaker PM and all the benefits that come with that is better than never having been PM. So no doubt there will be some people who would run on that basis, on the basis that in the longer term they would be more unlikely to have that opportunity. But equally there will be others who would prefer to keep their powder dry and wait for a more positive opportunity, which will probably come. Again, this is entirely my own opinion, but if Labour, if Keir Starmer's Labour comes in by a landslide in the next general election, I reckon that they would be in power for two or three years before another election was called and uh, the situation was reversed. Uh, by that time, the Tory party would have licked their wounds, got their shit together, and been ready for their next turn. So, you know, there will, I'm sure that there will be potential candidates who would think, well, no, if I'm gonna go for the premiership, I don't wanna do it on the basis that I'm only gonna be there for 12 or 18 months. I'd prefer to keep my powder dry, wait for three or four years, uh, and come in when um, I'd have much more of a chance of a more extended reign. 
Well, that was a bit of a lengthy run, wasn't it? But hey ho, that happened today. Um, I do take a keen interest in politics, so I decided to. Well, I didn't decide to rant about it. I decided to make a video driving to work, and that is one of the things that is uppermost on my mind. Apologies if you found that boring. And I will now talk about other things. The weather today has been, well, I don't know what it's been like for you, but it's been rotten. If you look at it now, uh, it's gray, it's overcast, and it's moist. And this is the best that it's been all day. I woke up to mist, fog, driving rain, a thoroughly, thoroughly late autumnal day. Um, and it stayed like that most of the day, and it's only in the last hour or two that it's improved slightly to what we see at the moment. What else? How has your week been? Uh, I hope it's been reasonably decent. Um, I've been... No, I'm not going to get out of that I do have some sandwich news for you. I had a sausage sandwich um, for lunch today with lashings of um, onion and lashings of mustard with just a couple of chips and a few onion rings. And I'm seriously, seriously, I'll even put on my more serious voice. I'm seriously thinking about extending this sandwich theme to tomorrow's lunch and having a ham sandwich. So that's exciting, isn't it? Now prepare yourself to salute Now prepare yourself to salute the Honourable Bridge. Uh, if you can remember previous driving to work videos, you will remember that this is a tradition that we honour on an inveterate basis, dating back to the days when Madame was... Do you? Hold on, here we go. Greetings, Honourable Bridge. There we go, let's that done with. quite interested in this lodge up here on the right. I quite like the idea of a lodge. Not sure why. Maybe it's something to do with having watched the man of Bourne when I, when I was a youngster and the divine Audrey moving to the lodge from, oh, what was the name of the place? Um, oh, Grantly Manor. Goodness me, a bit of blue sky. How pleasant. In car news, there's nothing much to report. Uh, I've stayed in Sir Arnold all this week. I used him on Sunday for the Project Nigel uh, meetup and wife swapping. Um, Bonanza Extravaganza thing uh, and then I used them again on Monday to whiz back and do the Motium Busted Motium Busted? Mustard and Boaty Do Cars thing and I've just kind of kept using him um, not sure why laziness I think more than anything I've kind of had a lazy week um, I just seem to be falling into that hibernating winter thing where instead of being motivated and proactive, you just kind of tread water and do the bare minimum and just kind of get through until spring comes and you get all motivated again. And that's going to get worse before it gets better. Wait until the clocks go back and the really cold weather kicks in and if you know anything about Windy Bum, you'll know that 
snow is due any time from now on really, certainly in November. November through to March there's always or nearly always snow. Or at the very least snow will come and go. It's never absent for long. Thank you for all your lovely interaction and comments on previous videos. Uh, well, the, what I really mean is the more recent videos, uh, the last um, two or three. Especially the, the one with the title that I was very proud of, Last of the Summer Boating, which I filmed on, I filmed that on Monday morning uh, when I was back off to, um, the Yard of Broken Dreams. Um, I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't hack doing the same, self same journey again. I'm doing it so often these days, it's at least a weekly thing. And of course I'd done it on the Sunday and I didn't want to do the same thing on a Monday as well. And it promised to be a decent day. And when I was planning to go to the Project Nigel meet thing, they were meeting up at a lay-by. Uh, now I didn't make it to that lay-by. I made it on the Monday, uh, eventually. Uh, but I didn't make it on the Sunday morning because I slept, so I went straight to the yard. But I realised, when I was looking at the route and figuring out the route to the lay-by, that the route was very different than I usually do territory that was unfamiliar to me uh, and looked rather pleasant and went via Home Firth and I've been aching to drive to Home Firth for literally for decades since I was a teenager. Simply because Home Firth is where Last of the Summer Wine was filmed and I loved the early series of Last of the Summer Wine. They were a simple innocent bloody joy an absolute joy and even though as a teenager I wouldn't have been the target market uh, or the target demographic I loved them and I always wanted to visit home first and I still kind of haven't visited it but at least I've driven through it so yes yeah, so on the Monday I decided to drive that route rather than the normal route, even though it was a little bit longer, um, because it was a little bit different, it would tick a box, and I'm so glad I did, it was um, a really lovely journey. The only balls up I made was that from home first on, I planned to go over Marston Moor, um, the route that we would have done on the, on the Sunday. Uh, and I bulged it up, set, set the, uh, the sat nav, forgot to tell it to avoid motorways, and of course it just led me onto the M62. But the bit up to home first was a joy, a delight, it was stunning. I loved it. Uh, I need to spend more time in that area. And um, the, the reaction to the video was great, and there were lots of comments and people telling me things I didn't know and places that I should visit so thanks for that and yeah I'm, I, I will spend more time covering that territory. So what I ended up doing then on the Monday afternoon if you don't know uh, obviously uh, we do some filming bits on a, on a Monday for the Mustard and Berkey Do Cars channel and I film uh, an episode of Mustard and Berkey Do Lunch. Um, but um, because of familial circumstance, we have to quit at half past two and pause until four, to, uh, four o'clock <clears throat> because the good captain has to go on school run duties. Um, so, during that time last Monday, I drove up to that Marston Moor car park. And that's another, um, that's another road that I need to do. I had no idea 
how stunning it was going to be. And because I didn't know, I didn't lay any commentary down on the video, which meant that I just had to um, cover up the uh, cover up the, aud uh, the audio on the on the video with um, with a bit of comedy, which was something I was planning to do anyway. But to be honest, um, that road and that area are so stunning that it deserved better than um, uh, than a, a radio soundtrack. So I will do it again. Maybe not this year. Maybe it'll be spring. But that's the kind of road that I need to do in um, in a nice convertible with the with the roof down. Should I should I have one? <clears throat> I'm half thinking about that, by the way. Um, I'm half thinking about trying to swap or sell um, a couple of uh, one or two of mine and turn them into an MGF or uh, an MGTF at some point over the winter when they're when they're cheaper. So that come spring, I've got a nice rag top to to play with. Um, I haven't obviously I haven't got a rag top at the moment. Um, I haven't had one since. Betty Ford bit the dust through the the dreaded tin worm, uh, and a quite fancy one. So yeah, so that's something that I might try and make happen over the months to come. Um, and there we are. Look, we're kind of almost at work, which means that I must have rattled on for well, coming up for. Uh, probably a good half an hour so I guess we need to get ready to wrap this one up um, I hope you've enjoyed coming to work with me I hope I didn't bore you too much by talking about the news uh, the news events of the day um, if you didn't enjoy that bit watch it again but turn the sound off and enjoy the the colours. It's quite nice, I think, to periodically film roads um, that are regular roads and that you filmed before, but doing it as the seasons change and you see the the changing colours and the changing scenery. Um, so I hope. Oh, she was nice in that van. Did you see her? Um, so I hope you enjoyed that aspect. Um, and I'll be sure to do some drives to work when the when the snow comes because they can be somewhat challenging. <clears throat> One of the hardest things about filming YouTube videos is it's jolly difficult to smoke and talk at the same time. Sid James used to be able to do it. Clearly a more talented performer than I. Oh, is the fair gone or is it still here? Oh, still here. There's a fair here in Ripley. And I find that rather jolly. I like the sounds and I like the the flashy lights and the sense of fun and jollity. And I haven't been to a fun fair for years and years and years and years and years and years. And I'd like to go. Does anybody want to come to a fair with me? Let's all meet up and go to a fair. Yeah, same to you, mate. Oh, okay. Right. Let's all meet up and go to a winter fair somewhere. Right, that's it for this one. Thank you for your company. Wouldn't be the same without you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. When will this one be going out? Uh, tomorrow night, that's Friday night. Have a fabulous weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.